Using the same colors that I used in the sky, I'll begin painting in my mountain base colors. I'll start with the most distant mountains and I'll apply the paint just slightly darker in value than the sky. With my brush dipped in water, I'm going to diffuse the edge that runs into the closer mountains. I don't want a hard edge to form here. I'll carefully follow the upper edge while making sure that the lower edge of my painted area does not dry on me. I don't want a hard edge to form. As these colors approach the closer mountains, I'll diffuse their edge with a brush loaded with water. Again, I don't want a hard edge to form here. I want to lose this edge into the closer mountains. Then I'll give it a dry. The next area of mountains are a bit closer to the viewer, so I'll paint them in a bit darker in value. But again, I'll use the same colors that I used in the sky. First, I'll spray the lower portion of the painting with water. Again, I do this so that a hard edge doesn't form down there. I want to gradually lose the bottom edge of the mountains. With a larger flat brush, I'll do the same as the previous set of mountains, carefully following the top edge while making sure that the lower edge does not dry on me. You can see that this is a bit darker in value. Make certain that the previously painted mountains are completely dry. If they're not, you won't be able to get a nice crisp edge on this set of mountains. And I'll spray with water again the area where the mountain colors intersect the trees. Again, to prevent a hard edge from forming. I try and vary between these two colors so that the mountains do not end up being one solid boring color. This wet on wet blending effect is one of watercolor's most amazing attributes. And again, I'll spray off the lower edge. And I'll pick up some of the puddles with a dry brush and a tissue. Then, lock in the colors with my blow dryer. <laughs> 